Hi there, and welcome to my silly little crafty adventure. Um, today's video is going to be something new for me. A little Q&A moment. Don't mind the gloves. They're my little compression gloves. It's actually mostly because it's really freezing in my apartment and my hands were absolutely ice blocks. And I need to take care of all my little tendons because I had tendonitis. So I'm wearing my little gloves. Um, this makes me want to knit um, fingers, <laughs> fingerless gloves because I've seen them like everywhere all over Instagram and I want in. I have not been inspired to do a crochet project in a minute because I've been like on a little knitting kick and like now knitting socks. So that's besides the point. Today, Q&A. Okay, over on my Instagram, I asked my followers if they had any questions about crafts or about me, the answer was yes. So let us look at some of these questions here that folks had for me, okay? And we'll give it a little answer. The first one I loved personally, and it was, what is your go-to dance move when your favorite song plays? And I have an immediate answer for this, okay? I am a dancer girl. Um, catch me on the dance floor, at weddings, parties. I love it. Um, and my go-to dance move is in fact this. Do it, let me take off the gloves for full effect. Everyone in my family could do it. People say it's cause we're double jointed. I don't think we are, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, you just need to like go with the freaking flow here. So anyways, that's my go-to dance move. Um, my favorite song is Dancing Queen by ABBA, so that's that. The next one, real quick answer, um, will you have a pattern testers for the Appa plush? So I crocheted a giant Appa, if you haven't seen him in any other videos or posts or whatever, um, and he is my pride and joy. I made a pattern for Appa and I've been, you know, reminding people every once in a while, like, it's in testing, it'll come out soon, because a lot of people are interested. So no, I'm not looking for pattern testers, because um, I currently, it's in pattern testing already, but that should finish at the end of January, and the pattern should be good to go, hopefully by the first few weeks of February, because um, I know a lot of people are excited about that. And I am too, personally, so. The next question is asking, what is the most fulfilling project that I've completed? And the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is APA. Um, I was in high school. I had never designed a pattern for anything before. Um, I It's the biggest project I've done. It's the biggest pattern I've designed. And I did it in high school when I was not... Um, not experienced at all. I mean, I still am like a little baby beginner and I had no, like that was the first pattern I wrote too. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool and I'm pretty proud of that. As far as like the most complex thing that I've made, geez, I don't know. I'm really proud of this knit sock that I'm doing right now. I am not a knitter. I started knitting actually before I crocheted and switched over because crochet worked for me more. But I just think knitting is so beautiful and knitting socks, I mean, there's nothing better, seriously. So I'm really proud of my socks. I'm really proud of fulfilling. Um, I won't show you this until after, but I crocheted the cake topper for my wedding in May. And I'm really proud of that. That was very fulfilling. I think because like I decided not to DIY a lot of stuff for my wedding because if I did, I'd lose my mind. This next question is about adding yarn to a project and about there being a knot and trying to avoid a knot. So when I add yarn into a project, I'm guessing they're talking about joining two different colors in a project, like color switching. Um, I don't tie it with a knot, um, at least not to connect it, but what you'll do is um, before you pull off, before you yarn over and pull off your last two loops, you will just 
drape the new color over and yarn over with that and drop the old color and just start crocheting with the new color. And then afterwards, if you wanna go and tie the two tails in a knot and weave in the ends, you can. Um, that's of course, if there's a right side to the project. If it's two-sided, you'll probably want to just maybe weave and felt in the ends. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I joined. What is the first thing I've made? LOL. So I learned to knit before I learned to crochet. And I learned to knit from a neighbor and I was very bad. So my first knit project, I was like a gutsy little gal. So I was like, I'm going to do a blanket. Um, it was the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> and so my first project, like fiber arts project, was a very horribly purple and yellow blanket. Yeah. And it was just, uh, you know, knit a row, purl a row, very misshapen squares that I made into this blanket. And the thing is the blanket was like, maybe from my shoulders to my knees. It was, yeah. Um, as far as first crochet project, I don't remember. I remember a very early project that I did was for my, one of my elementary school projects you had to have like a visual aid with your presentation and it was about like animals and I think I had hedgehogs. My mom made the mom one and I made the baby one and hers was so much better than mine and I was so mad. I wasn't so mad. I was so disheartened because I was like, I've been doing this for weeks and you just pick it up and you make it such a nice one and I can't even do this little baby hedgehog good. It was a whole thing. If you still go to school, what do you study? I do still go to school, um, so I graduated high school and then moved to where I live now, where I go to a community college with an associate's degree in um, echocardiography or cardiac sonography, um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to school to be a cardiac sonographer, which is someone who does ultrasounds on people's hearts. Um, currently, I have one semester of classes left to go and two semesters of clinicals. So this time next year, I will be graduated. Um, where did you get the pattern for your cat sweater? It's super cute. So I have my cat sweater that I've worn in other videos. Like I wore it in my styling my winter makes video. And I will link the video tutorial that I followed in the description because it was really fun to make. And it's like one of my favorite sweaters and I'm so sad that I never know like where to wear it. But I will link that in the description. It was a really great tutorial. Last one that I'll do, because so many people were so nice and asked these questions, but the last one that I'll do is here. And it says, how did you start your Etsy shop? Um, so that was a, so I started my Etsy shop a long time ago when I was young and making things that were not great. Um, and I started it because you just have to start. You're not going to become an expert by not doing something, you know? I'm not saying I'm an expert, but it, I started an Etsy shop when I was like in middle school. Um, and I didn't get any sales, maybe like one every six months. Um... I started my Instagram page in high school um, and I have rebranded my little crochet content brand so many times. It started as Huggables by Hannah because again, I made a bunch of stuffed animals and then it became when in high school, I like revived the effort because like in middle school, I was like, I get no sales. I'm just going to leave these listings up here. And like, if I get a sale once a year, I'm good. And like, sometimes it wasn't even that. Okay. Um, but that's also because I wasn't putting any effort in. So I wasn't getting any benefit out. You know, I wasn't, um, you know, making better listings, doing better photography, writing better descriptions, marketing better. I was just, just leaving it. So it's like, you know, it was what it was. But in high school, when I revived it, it became soft girl crochet because I love pinks, pastels, the soft girl aesthetic. I love it. Um, and I thought, well, I don't just make stuffed animals, little huggable things now. So I need to move into like 
a different name. So then it turned into soft girl crochet. I started my Instagram account and started posting. Um, I grew steadily over time with consistency, not grew a lot, but grew a little, um, maybe like 500 followers. Um, I was a small page and then I rebranded again once I came out to college, um, not long ago actually, cause I was soft girl crochet through my freshman year of college and I don't like to force my hobby to be work. So if I didn't feel like posting, I just wouldn't post. If I didn't feel like making new listings, I wouldn't make new listings. So like for a few months out of the year, I was into it. And then the rest of the year I wasn't. And now we're here and I'm like excited about it again. So I'm going to do it again. And I rebranded again to something that will just be for the rest of my life, which is handmade so I can make anything by Hannah M. Um, actually, fun fact, I'm not Hannah M yet. Um, the M comes from my fiance's last name, um, because Handmade by Hannah has taken on every social ever. And so I needed to come up with something unique and I thought it sounded really cute and catchy, but in less than five months, I'll be Hannah M. So there you go. Um, it's not the actual full last name. It's not E-M-M. -M. It's just M is the first letter. And I thought E-M was a better way to write it. So then I did that and I've been a lot more consistent and I feel very grateful for the reach that some of my reels have made. Um, for quite a few months, I posted a new reel every single day. Um, I found trending audios. I tried to make really good or funny things. I mean... It, whatever was fun for me and then a few of them went little lowercase v viral and then my oppa videos two of them went and and i think one about tendonitis went literally uppercase v viral like and i jumped from i don't even know maybe i was at like two thousand fall i don't even remember and now I'm at 22,000, which again, I am so, so grateful for. So all in all, what I would say to that question of how did I start my Etsy shop? I would say, go on, start a shop. It's not like you have to commit to anything. Um, it's 20 cents per listing. So it's not a huge investment. I would definitely say in today's day and age, if you want a bigger audience, start an Instagram um, for your business. And I would say be consistent even when you're not going viral because I still grew even before those videos literally popped off. Like I was still growing followers steadily, you know, because I was posting every day things that were valuable to those people. So. That's my advice for that is I would say, go on to Etsy, start a shop. You don't even have to list anything. Just get a feel for Etsy. Watch some videos on kind of how to make good listings, how to take good photos, um, start an Instagram and go for it, honestly. Um, you're never gonna get better or more prepared by not doing it, so. Anyways, those are all the questions I'm gonna cover today. I thought this was fun and funky to just chat a little, have a little ramble. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you'd like to see these videos every once in a while, let me know in the comments and definitely check out my Instagram if you want to stay up to date on any way that you can be involved in my content production. And um, yeah, like this video and subscribe and keep crafting.